guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I get a lot of questions re with regards to, and that is safe skincare products during pregnancy. What kind of ingredients in our skincare products should we be avoiding? This is a topic that is really actually kind of difficult for me to address in any sort of video format, simply because there's just very little data on um, ingredient safety during pregnancy and development. <clears throat> and we always just err on the side of caution when we don't know things um, rather than cause unnecessary harm. So the overriding message I will say is always, always, always discuss with your treating healthcare provider. Um, go over what products you're using with them uh, to make sure that what you're using is, is safe and that they feel comfortable that it's gonna be okay as well. Um, but in this video, you know, I can give you some ingredients um, that we know, that we generally recommend to be avoided during pregnancy and the reasons why. So, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I am a dermatologist um, and I have a YouTube channel here. I share fun vlogs in my life as well as a lot of skincare focused content, skincare Q and A's. I've never been pregnant before, disclaimer, but I've counseled many pregnant women on their skincare. So, during pregnancy, I think some of the more common skin concerns that tend to flare, arise, worsen um, are things like acne for sure. Uh, can definitely get a lot worse, as can um, a condition known as melasma, uh, or dark patches on the face. This is a condition that um, not only can get worse during pregnancy, but also oftentimes first occurs during pregnancy. I did a Q&A last week all about stretch marks, um, and uh, so, you know, we all know that stretch marks can develop during pregnancy. And then one of the other things that I think is underappreciated, but certainly is quite common, is, is dry skin during pregnancy. Something called atopic eruption of pregnancy is actually quite common. Um, a type of dry, just itchy, rashy, kind of eczema-prone skin um, that can occur and is actually pretty common uh, to develop dry skin, eczema skin, itch, itchy patches here and there. Um, and so body moisturizers become really important, um, as they always are. <laughs> um, all right, but as far as ingredients, um, bearing those kind of categories in mind, so products that you're going to be using already if you you know you already have some of these conditions or you're developing them products that you know you're, you may be wondering about let's talk about products in the realm of, of acne treatments okay or you know over-the-counter acne acne treatments what is safe and what is not safe let's start with the with the big guy the retinoids um, and the retinols um, we know that uh, systemic retinoids like isotretinoin or Accutane are certainly not safe during pregnancy um, and are associated with terrible birth defects. They are contraindicated in pregnancy. In fact, as, I'm, as I discussed in my Accutane video, if you're a woman of childbearing age in, in the United States um, who wants to go on Accutane, you have to show two forms of, that you're going to comply with two forms of birth control and you have to have all of these pregnancy tests to prove that you're not pregnant uh, before you can even get the medication uh, because the uh, consequences to, to fetal development are severe. So um, that is one we know for sure that sh should absolutely never be taken. There are also other, other systemic retinoids like Accutane that are prescribed for other um, dermatologic diseases like Acetretin um, or a brand name Soriatane is an example. Um, so, you know, those are absolutely not safe in pregnancy. But what about the retinoids that we put on our face and creams? What about our retinols, like what's found in the Polish Choice, what's found in a rock? Um, I think The Ordinary makes a retinol serum. I mean, you go into any, any skincare, you know, line and they're going to have some sort of retinol anti-aging serum okay is that safe to use well um generally it's it's it is cautioned that you not use any retinol um because we simply don't know and bearing that they're you know derived from and in sort of the same um family as uh retinoids you know, theoretically, we're always like, well, what about the risk of systemic absorption? Could that cause harm? So we generally just say, just avoid those guys. Um, likewise, the um, prescription topical retinoids, tretinoin, brand name Retin-A, um, 
uh, the ad adapaline, which you can get over the counter as brand name Differin, should be avoided, um, as should uh, prescription Tazeratine or Tazerac, okay? So those are, um, it's generally recommended to avoid those, okay? Um, because we don't know and there's always the theoretical risk of um, absorption and what, what potential risk could that have on, on the unborn baby. What very limited safety data that we do, however, have, um, there was a large prospective study. That means they looked at um, people who were pregnant and they followed them moving forward, okay, and as far as their, their babies and, and that sort of thing. And it seemed to show that there was no increased risk of birth defects um, amongst women using um, retinoids in the first trimester. So in general, it's just recommended to err on the side of caution and avoid them. The second ingredient that is common in a lot of acne washes is something called benzoyl peroxide. Um, and I, I personally love benzoyl peroxide. I use it. I use it on my back for back acne flares related to working out. It is a great ingredient in acne. However, it is generally recommended that you avoid benzoyl peroxide during pregnancy, again, because the risk um, to the developing uh, baby is not um, known. <laughs> um, and there is some uh, risk of absorption of benzoyl peroxide particularly on areas of the skin that are, you know, maybe a little bit more open, a little bit more raw and rashy. Benzoyl peroxide at 10% strength can have a transcutaneous absorption of around 3%, so that's pretty low, and whether or not that actually makes it to the baby, nobody knows, but nobody wants to find out, right? So it's, a, it's recommended that that be avoided. But, uh, you know, people have used benzoyl peroxide unknowingly, and there have been no reports of um, adverse effects to uh, to the fetus, no, no reports of birth defects. Um, but it's not something that we have a large body of evidence for, and given that there is potential for transcutaneous absorption of benzoyl peroxide, it's simply just recommended that you avoid that. Then another favorite acne ingredient in, of mine is salicylic acid, um, or be careful, it's also frequently sold under the moniker as BHA, okay? Just look for the active ingredient, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is generally is also recommended that you avoid, and here's the reason why. Salicylic acid, you know, is a derivative similar to aspirin, okay? Um, and so salicylic acid can be absorbed um, transcutaneously, particularly if the individual is using the salicylic acid um, under occlusion, okay? So an example in which this, this might be done is um, somebody's using one of those salicylic acid leave-on patches. Um, you know, in that setting, the absorption is higher, okay? And so there are some theoretical risks that really haven't you know, we don't have any data to support, but it's a theory and it makes us uneasy, so we say avoid it. And that is, you know, is there potential for salicylate toxicity or similar to, to aspirin toxicity in the um, unborn child if mothers use high concentrations or any concentration of topical salicylic acid? So that one is also one that we definitely recommend that you avoid, okay? And those And those are, you know, those are really big guns in topical management of acne right there that we just knocked out. Retinoids, benzoyl peroxide, and salicylic acid. So what can you use? What are you left with? If you've got acne in pregnancy, what options do you have as far as active ingredients? Well, one active ingredient that is um, thought to be safe and is... Um, okay to use during pregnancy is something called azelaic acid. It's what's in Phenacea, um, as well as um, lactic acid uh, face washes are thought to be safe. And then another option that you could pursue with your treating dermatologist actually is red or blue light therapy. Um, and they sell a variety of LED devices over the counter that um, you could also use um, that have been shown to be helpful and are safe during pregnancy. Um, and so that is another option as well. But managing acne during pregnancy can be very, very difficult because it can get quite a bit worse. And so those are just some general topical things that are okay to use. Um, a lot of the systemic medications for acne are not okay to use, as your treating healthcare provider will advise you regarding. Um, there are a few, but not very many. So the blue and red light um, treatment is, is one option, and there are a variety of other light and laser-based um, devices that may be okay to use during pregnancy as well. 
I have a whole video talking about lasers. Um, and if you watch that video, one of the things you'll remember is that sometimes a laser can be painful. Um, and so guess what? <laughs> we don't like to cause pregnant women pain, okay? Because pain and discomfort, that always makes us uneasy in that uh, potentially that could um, cause some fetal distress. So, um, you know, while uh, light and laser are thought to be safe, if it's causing you discomfort, that could potentially um, cause you know some sort of distress to the baby. So it, it's probably going to be um, up to the physician's preference as to whether or not they might select a, right, the, a laser um, treatment for you. But some many lasers are are helpful adjuvants to acne during pregnancy. Um, so there's that. And the the red but the red and blue light thing is painless. I mean you just sit under the under the light and. And it can help calm down the inflammation in the skin. It can help um, reduce the number of propiani bacteria uh, that contribute to acne. So it can actually be a helpful, a helpful little friend. But moving along to kind of the next concern in pregnancy, which would be melasma. Um, a melasma can um, first occur during pregnancy and uh, can, be, can be really problematic and quite distressing for the mother. Um, as far as melasma creams and, and brightening creams and fade creams, what is considered to be safe and unsafe? Um, probably the mainstay of melasma treatment is uh, hydroquinone, and hydroquinone is, is not thought to be safe at all during pregnancy. Um, hydroquinone is what is in a lot of bleaching creams. Always be sure and look at the ingredients in over-the-counter creams that are fade creams. A lot of them have it in there, so make sure you look, okay? Hydroquinone. The reason that hydroquinone is advised to, to be avoided is that the transcutaneous absorption of hydroquinone it, it can be pretty high, somewhere around you know 30 to 40 percent. Um, we don't have any available data that suggests that it is um, dangerous to the baby, but uh, we don't want to take that risk of uncertainty, so we recommend that it is avoided. But what can you do about melasma during pregnancy? Well, like everything um, in all of my skincare Q and A's. Sunscreen certainly is safe, okay? Even the chemical sunscreens are considered safe during pregnancy. A lot of, you know, marketing will tell you that, you know, they're not natural or safe, but really we don't have that data and we know that sun, sun protection is safe during pregnancy and sunscreen use is safe. So go ahead and keep slapping on sunscreen, um, but the best sunscreen to look for, um, for kind of pregnancy concerns with regards to melasma and dark spots is a, is a mineral sunscreen that contains zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusively. Um, and if you can find a, a sunscreen that is tinted and has the inactive ingredient iron oxide in it, um, that affords a little bit additional protection against some of the broader wavelengths of light that um, also we are learning contribute to melasma and dark spots on the face. So that would be um, a, a safe and excellent uh, um, skincare product to be looking for is a sunscreen that is zinc titanium dioxide based uh, with the inactive ingredient iron oxide in it. I have a whole video on melasma dark spots um, that elaborates on that, but um, as far as pregnancy, sunscreen is, is safe and should be used. But the other thing to do during pregnancy for sure is to wear a broad brimmed hat um, and sun protective clothing as well um, and to not solely rely on sunscreen alone. Um, that will also protect your skin and keep it healthy during pregnancy. And then the other category of things that I'll talk about is kind of in the realm of dry skin and, and eczema skin. You know, it's, it's very common, even if you don't have eczema, for women to develop um, kind of eczema-like rashes during pregnancy, very itchy skin, dry skin. And it's kind of an interesting biology. If you've been following my channel for any period of time, you, you, you know, you probably learned and developed a keen uh, awareness of the fact that our skin is a barrier and our skin and our immune system, you know, they, they're kind of in cahoots and they're always working together to kind of survey the outside world, make sure no pathogens are coming in. They hate it when we put essential oils and fragrance on the skin and, you know, create rashy rashy reactions to get that off um, you know they protect us from developing skin cancers and one of the interesting things about uh, the biology and physiology of pregnancy is that our immune system um, kind of shifts gears and shifts focus a little bit 
um, towards uh, different aspects of and different cell populations of the immune system that are focused on um, not rejecting the baby because <laughs> you've got this this foreign body inside of you um, and so you know isn't it kind of remarkable that your immune system doesn't go oh my god get out there's a person in here yeah that's really cool so in doing that you, you know your immune system kind of gets distracted and in, in, in you know kind of checking out this creature that's growing in there and in doing so it kind of falls short a little bit in surveying some of your skin um, we think and in doing so and in you know kind of changing you know some of the population some of the soldiers if you will that, that are out there in the, in the field um, you, you can get uh, different types of, of skin rashes that you, you may never have had before. An eczema is probably one of the most common ones. You know, knowing that, particularly if you, you just found out you're pregnant or you're trying to conceive, you know, knowing that going forward, pregnancy is a time where it is sort of imperative for sure to really um, moisturize the skin um, and to uh, uh, make sure that you aren't using any drying soaps on the body. Um, and to make sure that you have a good fragrance-free moisturizer. Um, I will list some down below. I would say stay away from all of the organic, all natural, um, you know, body creams and lotions that tout themselves as being like super safe and clean and non-toxic. Those are actually probably more problematic than anything because a lot of times they will put um, a lot of lavender oil and essential oils and you know when your immune system is you know learning to cope with the baby it doesn't have time to be dealing with this so it's probably going to react if you go putting a fragrancy flowery ingredient on your skin it's it's not going to like that i mean this is a time when the skin you know you, you know you need to protect it give it a little bit of extra tlc with just a plain moisturizing cream that doesn't have any fragrance in it you know one of my favorites is the cerave that cerave moisturizing cream in the tub i think that is fantastic um you know vanny cream in the tub is another excellent one i will list some down below but hydrating the skin with these non um these fragrance free moisturizers is really um is really imperative during pregnancy to kind of get a, get a hold of that you know, I talked about in my Q&A last week about uh, stretch marks. And so, you know, there's no stretch mark cream out there, guys. If you missed that Q&A, check it out. But there is no ingredient or, or no cream and stretch, stretch mark cream out there that has been shown to prevent stretch marks. They develop, you know, probably as a result of your genetics. And a lot of times, if when they develop in pregnancy, they're called striae gravidarum. When they develop during pregnancy, a lot of times they go away, okay? Um, but one of the things that seems to be helpful is to use a moisturizing cream, you know, on the abdomen where you're, you're more likely to get them uh, during during pregnancy. And you need to be using a moisturizing cream anyway because, like I said, your skin's going to get a lot drier. So these are great in that regard. And I consider them, you know, you know, sort of your stretch mark cream. So think of them that way. Um, but dry skin care is really really important during pregnancy and we don't have a lot of data on what's unsafe and what's safe but I would say the overwhelming thing that you should you know be smart about is that you know a lot of uh, skincare companies will tell you that their products are safe and all natural and non-toxic but you know plants are chemicals okay so that claim really is kind of false and bear in mind that we simply don't have much data with regards to what ingredients are safe we don't really have safety data on any of these things so they're kind of misleading they're, they're definitely misleading statements that their products are non-toxic like okay did you test that in a bait you know in a in a fetus probably not so where are you coming up with this claim so don't be misled by by those kind of marketing claims um because there's really no no nothing to substantiate that but we do know that women are more likely to have flares of eczema, uh, whether they be predisposed to eczema or eczema for the first time during pregnancy. And eczema-prone skin, itchy, rashy skin, is prone to developing allergies to fragrance and essential oil. So those are things that you should probably avoid. Um, flowery extracts, all of these all-natural ingredients, and just stick to a plain, no-nonsense moisturizer on the body. Then as far as shampoo ingredients that might be considered safe or unsafe, I would say the um, one shampoo ingredient 
that is uh, recommended that you avoid it just because of theoretical concerns is one called sodium sulfacetamide. It's what's in um, uh, um, Cells in Blue shampoo. Um, so that's one that, that you might avoid. But anyways, guys, I really hope that this video was helpful and just um, kind of some general ingredients that we know should be avoided in topical skincare products. We, but like I said, we don't know a whole lot. And this type of video is, is really hard for me to make because overwhelmingly so, you know, when we don't know things, we just err on the side of caution and say avoid, 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 okay? Um, but what I really want you to, to do is to be smart consumers. Don't fall for marketing ploys that tell you that something is safer during pregnancy because it's all natural. Um, and I also, you know, want to make sure that you're aware that you should always, always talk about everything that you're using with your treating healthcare provider if you have any concerns whatsoever, um, because, you know, they can best advise you for you um, as well. And some, in some settings, certain things are just individualized, okay? And, you know, while I've obviously never been pregnant or had children, you're probably like, how, like, who are you to be telling me what is what is good and what is not? Um, you know, as a dermatologist, I do have a lot of knowledge about uh, skin changes during pregnancy uh, and skincare during pregnancy. And I have some fun ideas for videos that I'd like to do. If there's interest, I'm happy to do them. I thought one fun video might be what to expect when you're expecting as far as common, common skin changes that occur during pregnancy. Um, we talked, to, I mentioned today acne can get worse but there are all sorts of little fun things that that can pop up on the skin um, but I thought it might be a fun video to do I also would love to do a video on my pregnancy skincare favorites and uh, products that I think would be great products um, and things to have on hand for um, expecting uh, moms um, so if that kind of thing is of interest to you let me know in the comments um, it'd be fun to do uh, for sure yeah the ingredients to avoid <laughs> tends to be kind of a black hole of I don't know uncertainty simply because we we don't have a lot of, of safety data in that, that regard so we always err on the side of caution but I'd love to do some of those other videos if you guys are interested so comment below but I hope you enjoyed this one if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye